I assume everybody watching this video has heard the terms financial freedom or financial independence at some point in time. But what does that actually mean? Financial freedom, quite literally, is having enough residual income or monthly cash flow to completely pay for your month's living expenses. Now, while many people talk about financial freedom solely in the context of money, I want to talk more about it in the context of time. Because what financial freedom truly allows you to do is to choose how you spend your time, to choose where you spend your time, and to choose whom you want to spend that time with. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the necessary steps that you can take to start your journey to achieving financial freedom, regardless of where you're starting. Now, if you guys stick around till the end, I'm going to tell you what I truly believe is the fastest path to achieving financial freedom and building long-term or generational wealth. Now, before we get started, if you guys have a chance, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And if you get to the end of the video, please do hit the like button if you found value in this video. So without further ado, here are the necessary steps that you can take today to start your journey on achieving financial freedom. Step number one, start using a personal budget. This will help you track all your money inflows and outflows, because at the end of the day, we need to know where we're spending and how much we're spending each month. This is a very crucial first step to achieving financial freedom because again, financial freedom is gonna mean something different for every person. Depending on how, what your lifestyle is, financial freedom could be having $2,000 a month or $10,000 a month in residual income. So by having a personal budget, we'll have a better understanding of what that financial freedom number really is. Now, after we have developed a personal budget and have figured out what generally our financial freedom number is, we need to save up three to six months living expenses. And this is what we can call a rainy day or an emergency fund. And this money is only to be used for emergency purposes only. Think company-wide layoffs and you no longer have a job but still need to, to foot the bill for your living expenses, or you have a medical emergency or a family emergency that you need, to need money to dispose of quickly. Now the next step is going to be to get a perfect understanding of where we stand in terms of debt. And we need to understand how much we owe and what our monthly payment is to each of those obligations. So understand if you have credit card debt, if you have house debt, if you have car debt, if you have student loan debt, we need to get an understanding of this and build a plan to tackle that debt. Now there's generally two options for this. Option number one is to tackle the highest interest rate first. Now in theory this is smart because if you tackle the debt that you have the highest interest rate on, the faster you pay that off, the more money that you're gonna save. Now option number two is to pay off the smallest debt first and take all your extra money that you can throw at that debt until that first debt is paid off and then use all that extra money plus the money that you were originally paying on that smallest debt and use that to pay for the next smallest debt. Now a lot of people like this method because sometimes paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first can take months if not years to pay off. So by tackling the smallest debt, it can give us small wins along the way and it helps accumulate and snowball as we go and tackle each step one by one. Now the next step, and we can kind of do this in conjunction with the first few steps, but we need to set our goals. What is truly our financial freedom goal? Is our goal to work until we're age 60 or 65 years old so we can live a nice happy retirement? And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But some of you may have more ambitious goals like retiring by age 30 or 40 years old and being able to travel and spend more time with your kids and things like that. Now by setting these goals, we can direct our investments towards things that align with those goals. Now regardless what your goals are, this leads us to our next step, which is to begin investing today and invest consistently over time, regardless what the market's doing. So if your goal is to, again, retire by age 60 or 65 years old, you're probably better off putting a lot of money toward a 401k or an IRA, whether you do traditional or Roth. And again, chip away at those investments every single month. Be consistent with it. If your employer offers a company match, definitely take advantage of that. Now, if your goals differ from that and your goal is to retire by age 30 or 40 years old and travel the world, then you may want to look at diversifying some of your money or if not all of your money away from 401ks or IRAs and look into other things such as directly investing in the stock market and or investing in real estate. Regardless what you invest in, it's just important that you get started and you do it consistently. And this brings us to the topic of compound interest. Let's say you invest $100 today and that grows at 8% this year. Next year, you're gonna have now $108. And when you earn 8%, let's say, in perpetuity year over year, 
you're no longer just earning 8% on the original $100 you put in, but you're actually earning interest on everything that you invested and every, everything that's accumulated in interest along the way too. So now you're earning interest in year two on $108. So as you can see, this is gonna snowball and grow significantly over time. So I'll provide more of a specific example for you guys to just understand the power of investing and compound interest. If you invest $100 per month, every single month for the next 40 years, how much money do you think you would have? Now let's assume this grows at 8% annually. At the end of 40 years, you would have invested a total of $48,000. Now remember, since you invested it consistently over time, compounding at an annual rate of 8%, it compounded to a total of $313,040.27. So you guys gotta remember, the sooner you start investing, the better, because their money's gonna have more time to grow and accumulate. Now for those that stuck around, I did promise I'd tell you, in my opinion, what the fastest path to financial freedom is. And that is investing in rental properties or real estate. And again, I'm not saying investing in a 401k or an IRA is a bad thing. That can totally be part of your investment strategy. But diversifying into real estate could have a lot of benefits for you guys, especially if you want to retire at a younger age than say 60 or 65 years old. Benefit number one of investing in real estate or more specifically cash flowing rental properties is leverage. You can leverage the bank's money or some other form of lender. You can leverage their money to make the investment. So for example, you can buy a $100,000 house and only put down 10 to $20,000 out of your own pocket and use the rest of the bank's money to finance the purchase of the house and then you reap the benefits of the cash flow each month. Now monthly cash flow is benefit number two. And this is something that a 401k or an IRA is not going to give you until you can take the withdrawals at age 59 and a half or 65 years old, depending on the, the plan that you're in. Now you get paid monthly cash flow because typically traditional real estate investments, you buy a house or a property and then you turn around and rent it out to somebody else and they pay you monthly rent. Now this rent covers all your monthly expenses, your mortgage, and then whatever you're left on top is your monthly cash flow. Now as you acquire more properties over time, you start to accumulate the amount of cash flow you're making each month. And as you can see, whatever your financial freedom number is, once we get to a certain point where the amount of cash flow we're receiving from our rental properties is equal to or above that financial freedom number, you've achieved financial freedom. Benefit number three to investing in real estate is loan pay down. So a part of your expenses is the mortgage. And in that mortgage, you were paying the debt service to the bank, right? You borrowed money from the bank and you were paying some part in principal and the rest in interest to the bank. But again, you're not really paying this. Your renters are paying this for you. So the renters are essentially paying the house off for you. Now each month that principal creeps up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And at the end of the say 30 year period that you have that loan for, you own the house free and clear and your renters paid it off for you. And what's really cool about that is you get to keep all of the equity. Now benefit number four of real estate is appreciation. And I consider this more icing on the cake, but think of appreciation as something to hedge against inflation. If you have money in a savings account, yet there's tremendous inflation happening year over year, you're technically losing buying power. Now, if you invest in assets such as real estate, appreciation is gonna keep up with inflation and in growing cities is oftentimes gonna outpace inflation, which in turn is going to allow you to build wealth and equity in those properties long term. Now what's really cool about appreciation is the fact that remember when we financed the house, right? The bank helped us buy the house and we only had to put 10 or 15% out of our pocket. We get to keep 100% of that appreciated value over time. So that's how powerful leverage is over the course of time. We buy a house today at this price, but we only have to use 10 or 20% of our own money to buy the house, but we get to keep 100% of the appreciation over time. Now, as time goes on, similar to before when we talked about our compound interest example, to where that money continues to grow and grow and grow over time, especially the more money we throw into the pile, real estate is similar. As we continue to acquire more properties over time, those properties begin to produce more cash flow and more cash flow and more cash flow. Now we can start leveraging that cash flow to buy additional property or invest in other areas such as the market in an index fund or in a Roth IRA or something else to diversify our investments. And again, continue on that path to achieve financial freedom and building significant wealth long-term. Now, of course, if real estate doesn't interest you, that's totally okay. I'm not here to tell you that real estate is the only way to achieve financial freedom because it certainly isn't. Everyone's path is different. The point I'm trying to get across is it's important to set a plan and have goals and follow that with daily action 
And I believe that anybody, including yourself watching this video today, can achieve financial freedom. So to recap today, guys, here are the steps to achieving financial freedom. Step number one, develop a personal budget and stick with it. Step number two, by using that personal budget, figure out what your financial freedom number is. Step number three, save up three to six months living expenses as a rainy day or emergency fund. Step number four, pay off your debt. The sooner you pay off your debt, the sooner you're gonna have excess cash to throw into your investments. Step number five, and again, this step really is a step that you're gonna take from the beginning and on, but that's to set your goals. What are your goals around financial freedom? What are your goals around retirement? What are the goals for your family? And then how can we develop a strategy that we can take daily action towards achieving those goals? And step number six, of course, is to begin investing today and investing consistently, regardless of what the market does. I hope that you guys got something out of this video and found value in it. If you did, please do hit the like button below and subscribe if you'd like to see similar content moving forward. Good luck to everybody out there on their path to achieving financial freedom. We'll catch you next time.